Welcome to Ada Makerspace. In this episode, we're featuring a builder in the ecosystem and tools he is creating for others to use and build on top of Cardano with. Please introduce yourself and you know the project you're working on and give us a little background. All right, so hey, my name is Geronimo and I am working on a wallet for Cardano and not only Cardano, but uh, the idea is to later expand that to other cryptocurrencies as well and create a big ecosystem where uh, everyone can uh, use that same infrastructure to build cool stuff with cryptocurrencies. My idea is to build uh, something that drives investment and utility to Cardano. So uh, I will uh, over time build things that uh, enable functions such as, for example, uh, password management. So currently, if you want a password manager, you use LastPass and all the other stuff. So you could do this uh, using the blockchain. It's pretty easy and simple to do, for example, and that will run using the Cardano blockchain. And then, yeah, and, and then if I enable Bitcoin users to use the wallet for Bitcoin, and I want them, and I want, and they want to use uh, things like password management, they would have to exchange that Bitcoin to ADA to enable the, the uh, password management features, for example. So the idea is to build is there is to build a big ecosystem uh, that works on the Cardano blockchain for the Cardano blockchain to bring bring utility to it, uh, but also enables uh, other users of other cryptocurrencies to use that same infrastructure, even if they don't believe in Cardano or anything. But uh, there is this uh, pathway that uh, kind of uh, incentivizes people to. Uh, try it out and buy Cardano and you know use it and Makes sense. Uh, make make the ecosystem grow. Yeah, I'm gonna pass you the um, screen share, and then if you'll want to, uh, you know, walk us through just um, you know where we can find you set on GitHub, and then maybe just kind okay. of break down how someone like me, for example. If I was starting a company or a or a DAP, how I would want to integrate this to do to make that easy, like you said. Um, okay, so baby steps. Uh, I built a backend that that uh, integrates with the Cardano backend, so it does everything that Daedalus does. So there's a library uh, that is ready for other developers if they want to build a wallet for Cardano, they can use that. And it's going to connect to Cardano Node and Cardano Wallet, which are um, utilities that uh, that uh, IOGK built. And basically, Daedalus is a front end; it's a user interface that connects to this stuff. And uh, exactly. So, yeah. so, uh, so, and I appreciate that. So, if I was, if I was, for example, with a DAP, if I wanted to have a a a, a wallet inside of my DAP. I could use your I could use your API to connect that to the Cardano blockchain. Yeah, you could use that, of course. I believe uh, it, uh, I I think that DApps. I'm I'm not I'm not sure. What would be how... the best use case that you would think someone would apply this for? And in, in uh... so, uh, for example, imagine you create. Um, a debt that is a lottery or a game or something, okay? You could load that inside the wallet. So it's not uh, pretty much like how Ethereum uses, uh, uh, uses its debt. So I mean, usually people have this MetaMask installed and they, okay. that interfaces, which is, that interfaces with the, with the debts, okay. right? Yeah. So the idea of my wallet, it's not a browser thing, so it's a desktop. Initially, the, the first version is a desktop thing that runs the, runs the Cardano node and the Cardano wallet, so it's a full wallet. That's the first step. Later, okay. I'm going to, to make this uh, work differently. But the first step is to build the infrastructure. 
and um, enable the full Cardano node to run on your on your desktop. Manage a wallet for you, and if you create wallet, uh, if you create uh, DApps and things that that uh, need to interact with the wallet, you can build these functions to work inside the wallet. So. One of the things I, I, I did was submit this uh, idea scale project where I plan to uh, enable plugins for this wallet infrastructure. So it's going to be uh, a plugin architecture. So basically you as a developer, you have a framework of kinds where you get some uh, code that with with uh, placeholders and things you just fill in so uh give a panel to show in the wallet with the components you want to display to enable your depth to work um uh, and then that will submit things to the blockchain essentially from the wallet so you can do pretty much whatever you want uh and it's going to run inside the wallet you uh, the regular users will uh, then download the wallet and have a selection of plugins to install one of them being your d app for example if you want to enable that to run from inside that wallet gotcha okay i'm starting to get a better picture now of it yeah 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 so yeah and, and the, the cool thing about having that uh with plugins and support for other cryptocurrencies is that then so you build this crazy cool thing that enables people to do i don't know what <laughs> and so then just to say cra user. like crazy cool things crazy cool things so you're talking are you kind of talking about someone could use this to in a way create um a version of daedalus that had different capabilities Kind yeah. of their own skinned, you know, kind of like we've got the project catalyst data list that has one new feature that doesn't exist in the normal data list wallet. Yeah, but in my in my my idea is that you can of course get the code and build your own wallet if you want, but you can also just add this extra voting function, for example, as a plugin of the wallet, so it enables that particular function. So users who want to who wanted to vote, they could, in theory, just select a plugin from a list of sources, install it there, and then enable them to vote without having to rely on a new version of a wallet to be built. It's a, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah essentially, the, the whole the, the idea behind of what I'm trying to do here is that I have this infrastructure that is not even a wallet by itself. It's an infrastructure that manages, manages all these things that are uh, plugged into it and, may, and, and inter allows the communication between these different components. And then the implementation of a Cardano wallet that, that I will build, build initially, uh, that will be a plugin. So the infrastructure loads that thing and it, you see a wallet for Cardano. Then you select some some other function you want to enable. It's going to download a plugin for a Bitcoin uh, wallet, for example, to enable uh, you users to to uh, create Bitcoin wallets in, from there. Then it you, you add this other you enable this other plugin to vote on Cardano if the main thing doesn't have, or if you want to create another Cardano wallet that is. A uh, light wallet, it connects to some server somewhere like your eye does. Uh, you, could, you can have all sorts of different things that are built uh, and managed from outside of that infrastructure. So uh, you don't depend on me as a developer to do anything for you. If you want to do something, you just update that plugin. And so it, it becomes an ecosystem by on its own. Uh, gotcha. So, and so, the idea is that other developers then can build things. So someone from the Bitcoin community can develop some report or something that is cool to you. And uh, us as Cardano users could use that uh, uh, ourselves as well, depending on 
what that component does. So the wallet will ha- the this this uh, infrastructure has really the kind of interoperability bring some inter- interoperability kind of to what you're doing. And will that be opened up to, uh, you know, uh, you know, like could someone uh, theoretically pretty much if any blockchain that they wanted, like even unknown ones, if they were working with small companies or. Yeah. 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 Cool. And the, the good thing uh, about having that is things can be, how can I say, uh, put into uh, general component uh, libraries, so it's very, very. It should be very simple for ad- another developer to just get uh, uh, ready to use a component that displays transactions. In general, so it, it loads these transactions from whatever blockchain you plug in. So you just need to feed the data into that component. It loads it. So. The process of creating a wallet for a new project, a new cryptocurrency, should be simpler as well because uh, the user interface components can be standardized. And that's uh, kind of what I was kind of wondering about when I first made my first questions was about DApps. Like, if there was kind of a, you know, a universal wallet API or that made DApp development easier instead of having to, you know. And how much cooler would it be if, you know, dApps could actually trade within different ecosystems, you know? Uh, yeah. So that's very cool. You know, I'm glad. Uh, it Sometimes it's hard to understand things just from reading a proposal yeah. or, you know, yeah. even if it's very well written, you know, I'm sure you've done a great job. It's just hard to always connect the dots everywhere, you know? Yeah. Yeah, my idea is to make this the next big thing in crypto, eventually. Uh, and no one, no one, yeah. no one pays attention to the, to, to to that. Uh, and it's, I think it's very hard sometimes if you have a great idea and I have a great concept. It's very hard to make people get it until you show them. So I'm already working on the on on a few things, a few bits and pieces over there, to make a, a, a user interface and. Uh, trying to to um, make the code uh, easy to at least enable other cryptocurrencies to be loaded, be supported. So later on, I can add support for Bitcoin. I already have a few uh, uh, bits of code that I am familiar with. Like there are libraries for managing Bitcoin, like Bitcoin J, which is pretty much what it has everything you need to build a wallet quickly. For, for for that blockchain. So once I get, I, I want to to make a, this a, a Cardano wallet with Bitcoin wallet and write documentation showing, hey, if you want, if you have your favorite blockchain, you can add support for that favorite blockchain following these steps or create guides and things. And uh, I think I'm pretty good at writing these sort of do- uh, tutorials and things, uh, the guides and code for programmers. I I've, I've been doing that for seven, eight years now. Got nice. uh, lots of open source projects. Uh, you can check my GitHub. There are lots of open source projects over there with lots and lots of documentation. Why don't uh, and, mentioning that? Why don't we show that now? So uh, let me get. Okay. Yeah, let's get you. Uh, screen share access okay i'll just type in github um, let's see the do you have to request it where is the i think so i just need to enable allow my computer to log into my github for some reason for me blah, blah. Da. Okay, cool. Let me get back to here. Oh, here it is. Share screen. Okay. All right, you're the host now. Cool. So I can share this screen here. 
I hope you can see my repository. I can see so it perfectly. GitHub can evolve. Okay. So, Envelope Cardano Wallet. That's the backend uh, of my uh, Cardano Wallet. And this is something that anyone that calls in Java can use already. They can, uh, I have the, all the uh, steps to enable that to work. So you, if you are a Java programmer, you need to add, to, and if you use, you can download the jar from this link here, or you can enable Maven, which is a dependency manager. It will pull this uh, envelope Cardano wallet built using, to support this version of the Cardano wallet backend. Uh, and the usage is pretty much like this. You write something like remote server, and you give a URL, connect to the port, and you're done. Then you can start to get uh, things from the Cardano wallet backend. Uh, it, network parameters, for example. If you do this, if you, exec, if you write these lines of code, you will get this output here, which is the network parameters. Uh, uh, something that gives you information about the about the state of the blockchain. So the decentralization, the decentralization level, like it was forty four percent, and now it's like thirty two percent. I don't know. So uh, you're talking about status of blockchain right now. What about um, like uh, you know metadata now as part of transaction? Metadata, yeah. There you go. Let me just scroll down. Metadata. There you go. So Boom, you can, so you can, yeah. So from a Shelly wallet, uh, you create a Shelly wallet somewhere up there, but it, it should be pretty simple. So you have a seed phrase, C generate an English seed phrase with 24 words. Then you do this server wallets, create or get a wallet name testing Shelly from a seed that you give and a password. Like Daedalus, it needs to be a 10 character password. You're gonna get a Shelly wallet. So from that thing, you can do that. Shelly wallet, you make a transfer to someone. So all transact, because metadata is a part of a transaction, you need to actually send ADA somewhere. So Shelly wallet transfer to another wallet, uh, 15 ADA with this metadata there, A, B, C, E, F, G, A, J, J, K, L, I, M, N, P, all. And you authorize with your with a password. And uh, internally, the library will, let me just take off the highlight. Internally, the library will, will build the metadata JSON like this. Uh, the Cardano blockchain expects uh, you to, to pass these components as zero and then the value one, the, the next value and so on. So it's going to build a wallet like this, uh, a map like this. Uh, you can create a more intricate structure with metadata like this. You can create a map with uh, strings and numbers and bytes and lists and things like that. Uh, Just to make sure I'm tracking with you too. So when you say this is a Shelly wallet, you're talking about this is a this is a normal wallet on the blockchain, then that you're doing all this. Yes. Within. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, from my testing, if I create a Byron wallet, it also works, even though I don't think it's uh, meant necessary. To. Yeah, uh, but uh, I tested this against uh, a blockchain that I can start locally here, and it, it works. It's not documented, but it seems to be working. Didn't try this on, on mainnet. Uh, and things very, that are very simple like this, uh, you have a server, you just do this, stake pools list asynchronously because it takes a long time. Uh, and then you call get, and you're gonna get a list of stake pools. All the stake pools that are available uh, on the blockchain come in this very nice, list uh, of stake pools. So it, it's pretty, it, it, it's pretty um, 
idiot proof, there is not a lot you can do wrong here. Uh, you get that uh, thing and with that, you can just build a user interface and display things you want the way you want. Uh, this is, so yeah, this is very to, cool. This is very cool. So if you want to delegate to stake pool, so let's say I get from the list of pools I got up there, I got the first one. So anything, the first one in the list. And then I just do that Shelly wallet, delegate to that pool, give my password, bam. I am delegated to that uh, stake pool. There, there is something that that people heard about that is these uh, uh, smash servers. So if you want to change the smash server, you can do these servers, stake pools, and metadata source. What, and some smash what does that mean, server smash server? Order. Um. Uh, they built some support for servers. Uh, that provides stake pools, so they categorize stake pools differently, and you can connect to different Smash servers. Gotcha. So it's like uh, allocated infrastructure resources at a at a cloud facility, like certain type of hardware. Uh, I think it's just people who don't. For example, someone doesn't doesn't want to show one percent. Uh, in their list of available stake pools, so in the Idolos, so you can connect to this other Smash server that doesn't show one person pools. <laughs> Interesting. The, yeah, the list of pools that comes out of that is selected by uh, whoever runs this Smash server you connect to. Yeah, I'm. It's meant to make things more decentralized, and I know I'm not sure. I'm I, I'm not even sure how. This is going to affect end users. I don't see data was giving you a list of Smash server. At least I didn't fiddle with it. Huh. Uh, what I what I what I what I do uh, is just I use all the all the uh, APIs that are available from the Cardano wallet backend into into. Into this, so I map everything that's in there uh, in that Cardano wallet backend here. Uh, I even generate the code from it. So the Cardano wallet backend, uh, I created that generator. So somewhere here, API generator. There you go. So every time IOG does something to the Cardano wallet, I can just update my code to get their definition of their whatever functions are available on the Cardano wallet backend. And I run this API generator class and it's going to generate like 300 classes based nice. on their API. So every time I have, there's a change in there, I can pick it up and load everything. And the output is super decent. Uh, it generates documentation and everything. So if you look at the code that's generated, it's going to be, I think, API generated. So all of these classes here are generated from that class I, I showed you. And it comes with the documentation as well. So there are warnings. So all of this documentation was written by IOG. And it's in the Cardano wallet backend. So I just uh, import everything. Yeah, made it more accessible just right where you need it. Yeah, and they did a pretty decent job at document, documenting their, their stuff. So it makes it made it super nice <laughs> for me. So when I generate everything, I generate the documentation as well. Nice. Now, this is. Uh, uh... And also, it, it, generating code from them makes it uh, simple, simple and easy for me to support whatever changes are, are out there. So, probably even before they release a new version of Daedalus, I can just get the code I have been working on, generate, update the the API, and have that enabled here as well. Very cool. Do you have um, like? Uh... You said that you are starting to work on UI and different things like that. Do you have yeah. any any like just um, 
uh, you know, wireframe demo thing that you've been fiddling around with that you could uh, just, you know, just kind of show us how you're fooling around I with? Have, I don't have on my Mac. I, I, I'm using a Mac to, to talk to you away from my home office because it's close to the room of the kids. It's, it's no 3 a.m. here. Yeah. So I can try to set the thing up here. I'm not sure if it's going to work, <laughs> but I think it's going to take it's going to take me at least half an hour until I get that run. Oh, okay, but, well, uh, you know, let, we can. So we can always do. I think honestly, we should. You know, if you're up to it, set up another uh, okay, one sure. of these no in the future, and we could do like a little mini build, and uh, you okay. know. You know, just a little, just kind of demo of how implementing this, you know, I don't know. Well, you can think of a use case that would, you know, or, or whatever. Um, but... Yeah, the user interface is just something that, in essence, loads. Let me just go back to that. So right there, I see, you know, you've got a lot of cool uh, GitHub repositories. So like uh, yeah. you know, Shopify and stuff, you're working on all these different ways to integrate it just yep. seemed uh is that part of like this uh this does your shopify build off of your some of your wallet no. work too or how do these work differently so this is the integration with uh e-commerce so my first proposal uh was to build the integration of with, with Card between cardano and shopify to enable uh, people to pay uh, in ADA or whatever token that runs in the Cardano blockchain uh, on, on stores that run on Shopify. So this is work that is now pending voting and I haven't looked at it again until voting is done. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, the idea here is to enable the, the integration of uh, of, of the, block, the Cardano blockchain with e-commerce in general, not only Shopify. So the first step is Shopify. Then we'll be, we'll, we will move to WooCommerce and all the other uh, online store. How, how, uh, how hard is it to go from this, Shopify to WooCommerce? Is that why, um, is that part of the funding, you know, like the seeking of fundings in the this DC fund is to take yeah. take this type of take this type of infrastructure and expand it to these other because i you yeah, know that, that, wordpress is that, huge so yeah Wo yeah, yeah Wo woocommerce is one of you know the most used e-commerce platforms out there mm -hmm. and i could see that you know um i like shopify but you know you can you can run a woocommerce wordpress site for free pretty much you know and yep. so there's a lot more people out there who are you know starting their small businesses on WordPress and WooCommerce because it's more affordable than Shopify. Yep, yep. So yeah, the idea here is to build the infrastructure. And I already had a few things built for Shopify. So for me, personally, it was easier and less risky to just go and start with Shopify. But the idea yep. is to support all other e-commerce platforms. And the bulk of the work is building the infrastructure to enable all the communication and interaction with the blockchain uh, and payments and all the payment processing and all that stuff. Once that is done, um, making the part that connects with Shopify is not that tricky and also making that work and inter interact with WooCommerce on the other platforms is not going to be that tricky as either. So, uh, this work here is to build the infrastructure, enable at least Shopify to run, and then moving on to other e-commerce platforms is going to be way faster and cheaper. So this is the, the first step in building that infrastructure that enables Cardano to be used as a means of payment or the Cardano blockchain. I, 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 I need to emphasize it's not payment in ADA only. As soon as we have other tokens enabled on the blockchain, we want to enable 
these tokens to be running it there as well. And yeah, it if someone completely... accepts a native token, they'll be able to pay with it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. The idea is. I just want to highlight. I... Yeah. Go. Sorry to interrupt you, but uh, you know, uh, for all the viewers, the you know, and the, just also, there's other ways. There's right there. I can see sponsor this project. So you know, even during this DC funding, there's other ways to help make this uh, become you know a bigger integration. This would you know, this is uh, this is awesome. The, you know, this what you're creating here and stuff. So you know, I mean, these the tools you're creating really do support, you know, entrepreneurs and businesses to start, uh, you know, leveraging Cardano as, you know, a, for utility. So it's very cool to see what you're doing here. Thank you. And the idea is to keep pushing. Um, but the, the, the thing is, I started with this and then I noticed that, hey, I, uh, to overcome a few limitations or characteristics of the blockchains in general to ex to enable payments i had to to build this wallet solution and then i realized hey this can be super big so um this is the this project was what prompted 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 me to start working uh on that wallet idea and then after i got it deeper into that uh, i realized hey i can make a whole lot of a difference uh here and build something that can become truly truly big and uh hopefully i'll get there so well yeah, yeah so, so it's these kind of it's these kind of things that you know kind of empower people to uh create you know yeah. the next big thing so yeah uh, you know if you don't have yeah, if you have and, the building blocks. Yeah, I, I, I got the building blocks. That's the thing. I, or I'm building the building blocks. And um, the good thing is I have a, a software development company. So I can just submit uh, project after project on Catalyst and hire people and do whatever uh, is needed to make everything happen in parallel. Once I get you the have, basic, you have experience to manage these and see them to the yeah, finish yeah. line. Yep, yep. Yeah. Very cool. Well, Jerome, well, yeah. I appreciate you. Uh, I and I know that uh, um, I'm sure these are very well documented. You've done a great job on that, but I still think it'd be fun to get together another time and just sure. go through a little bit of like. Uh, how you implemented this on something or just so it, you know, I know that uh, I'm a slow learner sometimes. So it helps me to see things in a couple different ways. You want to see, you want to see things running. Lots yeah. of people are visual. You need to see the thing running. So yeah, what I built as, as for a user interface is just, you know, a screen, you have wallets, you have the great wallet button, you type your wallet names, it phrase, all that stuff. So far, I got that and display logs and things, and yeah, it's, it's going yeah, to get but, there. Yeah, it's I didn't, awesome. I didn't do a one, yeah, I didn't do a lot of work during this last month, you know, end of the year. So, uh, but yeah, going full steam ahead after the new year again. Yeah, well, you got uh, you got got my vote in this fun too. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> And uh, I hope others see this and realize what kind of tools you're creating. I mean, these are, this is what the challenge is about. You know, how do we encourage devs and entrepreneurs? Yeah. So this is how we and, encourage them by giving them easy building blocks. Cool. And if there's any dev out there, make sure to check this out. Uh, there are a few things I didn't do yet, which is testing everything on Mac. I did test on Windows and Linux, but didn't test on Mac, even though I have a Mac here. I didn't have time to finish this this, uh, this December, but yeah, I'll do that. Well, that's, uh, you know, a request to the community <laughs> now, you know. Yeah. And there are, there are things, if, 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 people, if people want to, to, to contribute and build something, uh, there are a few things like I'm building user interface, things like displaying... Uh, the list of stake posts, filtering them, 
you know, making this look nice. You can already get the, this code and make this run. Uh, if you want to build something for yourself, you can already do that. So there are all these websites that uh, allow you to uh, display stake posts. You can see with that one line of code, you can get this, the stake posts and you can build a website just to show your stake posts. It has all the details of a stake pool here. All the metadata that comes in the state pool, it's all available there. You could make like a little uh, website with your stats page, your live stats. Yeah, things kind of like, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you very much for your time and uh, look forward to uh, seeing how things turn out in the DC fund and encourage other people to visit these GitHubs, and uh, you can even support and sponsor this work there. So consider that. And uh, any final words yeah, for you. the uh, viewers? Yeah. Election time, vote on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks a lot for your time. Uh, and if you like to support me, you can either vote on me, or you can delegate to the shop stake pool. And uh, I'm here to to rock this ecosystem, make this thing bigger. And you're, it's not the last time you see, if you see and hear about me. I'm going to be, I'm going to be a, a pain in the ass for a long time Good. now. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs>